Now that we have the mid ring built, we're going to go ahead and build these uh, wedges or pieces of pie, anyways, the top half, and then we'll use the top half to build the bottom half. But let's go ahead and just concentrate on the basic shell of the top half first. Now we were careful when we started to make sure that the origin where the X, Y, and Z axis or red, green, and blue axes meet to be right in the center. And then the red axis, since this is a odd numbered side polygon shape, is perpendicular to this part here and goes right through the joint there. And so we're gonna use that to create a line and we're gonna draw it along the red axis until it hits the center. And then we're going to go up and along the blue axis, and I think we said 14 feet. So we'll see what that looks like. Nope, that's 14 inches, but I don't have to undo it. I can just type in one four and then the foot sign. And that's now 14 feet. So let's then come down to there to create a plane. But the next thing we're going to do is build an arc. So I'll type in A for arc. I'll start at the top. I'll come down to here. And then I'll mouse along here to get that inference in magenta. And then I'm just going to come out here carefully. And I'm going to call that good. Now we want to orbit around to make sure that those two faces are coplanar. That is that this face and this face are in the same plane. Of course you'll know in a heartbeat if they're not when you do this. When you erase this line, if it doesn't remain to be one solid face, you know that they're not quite in the right spot. So now I can take and erase that line right there and that line right there so that I'm just left with the arc. So now I'm going to take and rotate and copy this. So I'm going to select the arc and then I'm going to type in Q for rotate and I'm just going to put it down here in the center and then I'm going to come out along the red axis and start to rotate it but I want to make a copy so I need to tap my option key and then I'm going to bring it around exactly 40 degrees. So I'm not going to click, I'm actually just going to type in 40 and hit enter. And we now have the makings of one of the slices of our rocket ship. Now this next part is just a little bit tedious, it's just kind of connecting the dots. Because this arc is actually made up of a whole bunch of line segments that are grouped together. And so if you mouse along, come up the arc, you're going to hit a midpoint, and then you're going to hit an endpoint, and we're just going to come across here, and I must have missed, because it, oh, I have to make a line down here. There we go. Now we have a face. And then there's a midpoint, and there's an endpoint, so we're just going to connect the endpoints. Now if you go from this endpoint over to here, if you reverse the direction, that works too. Sometimes it reverses the faces, but in this particular case, this is going pretty good. Again, SketchUp is incapable of making curved, or capable of making perfect arcs. And we're almost done. Everything is made up of line segments. So that's looking pretty good. I like that a lot. So what I'm going to do at this point is I can come into one of these side views and if I draw a selection box around like this, well I got the top of this and I didn't want that so again I'm going to take and drag it this way and it only gets these pieces right here. So with those selected, and by the way, the other way to select them all, deselect, is to just go ahead and triple click. 
Now, if this highlights down below when you triple click, that means they're attached somehow and that you probably didn't make this a group. But I'm going to take and not make this a group, but I'm going to make it a component. I am going to call it uh, top wedge. And let's see. Uh, we don't need to glue it to anything. And again, you can add a description if you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And there is my top wedge. Now you might have guessed by now that I'm not going to want to go ahead and do that eight more times. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this component just like I have, type in Q for rotate, put it on the blue axis, just so it's centered. It can be down here on the ground, if you will, or it could be right there. It doesn't really matter. And then come out anywhere, click, start to rotate, doesn't matter which direction, tap your option key, and come around, and then just type in 40 degrees. And so that we don't have to do that seven more times, what we can do is we say, hey, you know what? I want eight of these. So I just type in 8x. Again, do not click down where I'm typing in 8x. You don't need, if you do that, it will halt the command and you're just going to have to start over. It won't ruin your model, but it also it won't work. So I just type in 8x, hit enter, and there's the top. So what I'm going to do at this point now is I'm going to take and grab all those pieces on the top. Whoops, I clicked in the wrong spot there. I've selected them again and then right click and I'm just going to make them a group. And that helps us visually with that. So there's the top of our rocket ship so far. Let's go ahead and make the bottom next. Now the bottom of the rocket ship shell is pretty much the same as the top except it has this opening in the bottom for the for the flame to come out. So what I'm going to do, and there's a lots of ways that you could you can build this bottom here. There we go. Um, is I'm just going to go ahead and click on a top wedge and I'm going to bring it out and place it. And then if I make any changes to this wedge, it's going to change all the rest of them because that's one of the characteristics and the advantages of a component. But I want this to be reversed upside down and I don't want it to be as long because I need an opening in the bottom. So I'm going to take my select tool, right click, and make this one unique. And when I do that, SketchUp in your components window goes ahead and just automatically names it for with you by appending uh, number one on the end of it but i want something a little more descriptive so i'm just going to call in bottom wedge and again it doesn't matter what you call it as long as you can find it and remember what it's called so now it's up here so let's go ahead and now and take and edit it. And the first thing I want to do is turn it upside down. And your instinct might be to go to the, use the rotate tool, but I want to make uh, take at least a couple rotations. And during that, I might accidentally get it um, disoriented. And so what I'm going to do instead is scale it to create a mirror of this. So I'll just type in S for scale. And when I do that, these grips show up and you can grab any of them. If I grab this one here, it's going to make it skinnier. I want to do that. Um, if I grab it up here, I can make it taller. I can rescale it this way. Any of those different things. So now I'm going to select it. And when I scale it, I'm going to grab the top and bottom grip in this particular case. I'm going to pull it down and pull it kind of inside out, if you will and then type it in negative one. So with that in place, I can now take and edit it. So I'll go ahead and do that next. So to edit this, I'm gonna double click on it to open up the component for editing. And I'm going to take and start to erase some of these segments here. There we go. And I think that's enough for the opening in the bottom. 
but we can always come back and edit that later on. So I'll tap my spacebar to get the select tool chosen again, and then I'll click just anywhere outside of here. And now I want to move it. Okay, so I switched to Safari because my mouse was no longer responding within Chrome. I'm not really sure what's going on, but um, sometimes you don't. So anyways, let's go ahead and move this. So I'll select it, type in M for move. I will grab a vertex or the top corner of the lower wedge. And then I will orbit around here and I'll get up nice and close. And that looks like where it goes. So I'll click OK to place it. And then Q for rotate. So let's see, I need to zoom out here a little bit. I'm just put the blue axis right there. I'll come out, click, start to move it. Tap my option key to make a copy. Type in 40 degrees, hit enter and then type in 8x to make a total of 8 copies. And there's the bottom of our rocket ship. Okay, the door for the rocket ship is looks just like the door on any kind of ship, especially a naval vessel, as long as this as well as this porthole over here on the left, and we can put it anywhere we want on the top. It is separated. There's a small distance between this and the mid ring and it is just about the same width as the seams although the seams of course get closer and closer together as they get up towards the very tip top of the rocket ship. Now there's lots of ways you can do this and I'm just going to do it one particular way for clarity's sake but if you want to go ahead and model directly on the rocket you know that would just be fine. So what I'm going to do here is taken. This is all one big group. So I'm going to take and explode it and then just click outside here. I'm going to click on just that wedge right there. Now the reason I chose this one is because it is lined up perfectly with the red, the green, and the blue axis which is coming out of your computer monitor and poking you right in the nose right now. And I'm going to use my keyboard to copy that and then paste it just like you would anything else. And I'm just going to stick it out here for now. Then I'm going to select the entire rocket ship again and group it. Kind of put it all back together. So I pulled a wedge out of there, but I've got, you know, I've still got my entire rocket ship there. And now I'm going to just take take and hide it because otherwise th things just get too cluttered up. So now I'm just going to take and kind of make a vertical piece of paper or a face that I can draw on or do some constructing on. So I'll type in R for rectangle and I'll click down in this vertice right here and I'll just pull it up and I want it to be about the same width as the base. Does it need to be exact? And because the rectangle is red, I know that it is straight up and down. If yours isn't straight up and down, try the arrow keys. So there's that. Let's verify that that's okay by just orbiting around here. There we go. Yep, and that's what I wanted. So I'll go back to my views here and click on this one right here. So I'm looking directly at it. By the way, I am using parallel projection. If you want to use the other, you can, but um, it probably doesn't matter so much because we're looking directly at it. Now, I can't see the wedge behind this sheet that I drew, but I can if I click and search for x-ray. And so there it is there. I'll turn it on. And now I will take my circle tool and I'm going to come up about, about here. So I will type in T for tape measure and I'm going to grab just along this edge, left edge, right edge, doesn't matter. I'm going to start to pull a guideline across and I'm going to mouse up here till I get to this midpoint. Maybe this one down here would be better. There it is right there. It's that kind of light blue colored midpoint. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. So you can see what I've done there. I'll hit escape 
And now I will draw a circle. Just going to eyeball this, maybe about this high right here. And if I pull across, funny things can happen. So I want to make sure that this is kind of nice and wide, but I also want to make sure that I'm on the face. And so we'll go ahead and click on that. It looks like it's 20 inches. So I'll come down here, make sure that I'm on that guideline, that I'm not on this face. That would make a kind of a circle that tilts away from me. You want to be on this. And let's see, I think I'll start up about that high. And I will pull out, I want to be on the face, and I'll type in 20 inches, and I've now got two identical circles. So now I will take and use my tape measure tool, and I'm going to pull this across, and I'm going to type in 10 inches. Actually, I need to type in 20 inches, so without clicking anywhere else, I can just type in 20 and redo it. And same here, I'll just pull across there and type in 20. And then I will zoom in, use my line tool to go from there down to there. And I'll come over here. So about there, down to about there. And if I did that right, I should be able to come in with my eraser and delete the bottom of that circle and that circle. And when I click inside, see how it highlights. So I've now got the face that I want. We're getting really close, trust me here. So I'll type in F for offset. I'll click on this edge and I'll zoom in here. So maybe about that much. And then I'll select this face, type F, and come in about the same amount. Just eyeball them, but that's going to be just fine for what we're doing. I'm going to turn X-ray off at this point. And then we'll come into a view like this. Actually, I'll orbit it around the other way. And I'm going to get rid of some stuff here because I don't need I don't need that, 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 or even these guidelines. Although I'll just leave them in place right now. So now I'm going to select this face right here. Use the push pull tool and push it all the way through that um, the wedge. And then I'm going to take this one here. And I'm going to pull it out, oh. select it, P for push-pull, and pull it out just a little bit. There we go. That looks good. Um, and I think I'm going to pull this one out just a touch too, just so it's away from that bottom panel right there. So now we just need to take and get rid of all the stuff that it doesn't or is not part of our door assembly. One thing I'll mention here, you'll notice how this is kind of a dark bluish gray, and that's because the face is backwards. For all intents and purposes, it probably doesn't really matter, um, but if you want to change it at this point, you can just go ahead and reverse faces like that. You can click on these and reverse them, and you know, it, can, it takes a little bit of time, but um, it's not a big deal so I'm just going to do it right now because later on we're just going to take and make everything Wallace and Gromit orange and the direction of the faces won't really matter at least not for this model so let's go ahead and cut that wedge away and we can do that by just getting rid of the individual line so looking at this view right here I'm just going to grab all of that geometry right there and delete it and Let's see here, we got this line right here that we can delete. It actually went a little bit quicker than I thought it was gonna go. So, so that looks good. Um, so now let's go ahead and put it in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see, well, I always wanna go up there because I'm used to using the desktop version. Let's um, 
turn on our hidden geometry and our hidden objects. So there's our rocket ship. So I'm going to go control A to select everything in the model and I'm going to unhide it. So we've now got our rocket ship back. Let's do a zoom extents just to see what we've got. And we should be able to, because we are careful, remember we pulled this wedge right out so everything was lined up. We should be able to take and move this and let's go ahead and group this right now so it's just one group and I'm going to take and click on the move tool and I'm going to pick a base point anywhere so I just clicked out here in the middle of space but what I want to make sure I'm doing is move it along the red axis inside just like that now I made it a little bit too low somehow, didn't I? Not really quite sure how that happened, but that's okay. I'm just gonna come back. I'm just gonna click right there for now. I'm not gonna deselect anything. I'm gonna zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. And then again, I'm gonna click out in space and this time I'm gonna move it up along the blue axes. And let's take a look at that view. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we'll go back to 3D view here. I'll actually choose that one right there. I need to move it back just a little bit more, so I'm just going to click anywhere. If you want to click up here on the, you know, like the corner of the group or whatever, you can do that also. Just make sure that you pull it back along the appropriate axis. See how it starts to disappear inside? So just make sure it's sticking out a little bit. And then we're going to take and create or cut this so that it is actually joins the spaceship in a way that makes sense. So let's talk about this for a second. If we zoom in here, you will notice that this edge right here, matter of fact, almost all of these edges are a crisp black thin line. Doesn't matter how much you zoom in, they're always going to be the same width because they're infinitely thin. However, Right along here, there is not a line. There's not an edge right there. Now I could take and draw one in there, but that's not a very efficient way of doing it. So instead, I'm going to take and right click on this, and I'm going to intersect the faces of my door with the model, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to zoom in here and watch along this area right up here. So I'm going to intersect the faces with the model, here we go. See, it filled those in for us. Okay, so my browser froze up again. So here I'm back. Um, but while I was diddling around with this and getting it restored, I realized that I had made a mistake. And I make mistakes all the time. I mean, everybody does. So I want to show you, instead of trying to pretend I'm perfect, how I'm going to fix my mistake. So here's my mistake. Remember I took this group right here and intersected it with the rest of the model which is basically the whole rocket ship but that, that's another group and so if we come in here and turn on x-ray you can see that it went ahead and created that intersection geometry right there so it cut out the opening but if I click on this group right here and double click on it and just pick on this side, it did not split the part that I want to keep. That's the outside part of the door with the part that's inside the rocket ship, which would interfere with Wallace and Gromit's cheese extravaganza. That's it, cheese. We'll go somewhere where there's cheese. So here's how I fix that. I need to take this group right here and double click and edit it, you know, so that I'm now in editing mode. So I can now select individual line segments or faces within the group. And I'm just going to go Command or Control A to select all of it. So now I've got all those individual faces and edges. And now I'm going to take those, and rather than as a group, I'm just going to take all those individual guys and intersect them with the model and it doesn't look like anything happened but now if I click here you can see I've only got that back face which I can delete 
and I can come in here and delete these individual parts. Now what might be a little bit quicker would be if I could see inside. So I'm just going to orbit this around here so that I can see inside right through the bottom of the rocket ship. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to grab all those edges right there and delete them. I'm going to orbit around a little bit to see if I got all of it. I think that did it, but let's see here. Oh, okay, I need to come back in and look at my views here. And let's turn X-ray off at this point. There must be a shortcut somewhere for X-ray, but if there is, I haven't found it. And so now I can just click outside and there's our door. I think that's pretty much done. I could do a little more diddling with it, but if you've gotten this far with a project that is this complicated, and have nice clean intersections and faces that are where they're supposed to be. That's just fantastic. So let's go ahead and make the porthole window next. We'll put in the porthole type window next. It's basically the same process as putting in the door. I'm going to begin by taking and double clicking to open up my group for editing and then uh, let's see here. You know, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this group and I'm just going to go ahead and try to explode it. Yeah, so you see we've got all our top components. We've got our mid ring, our door, our fins, all the rest of that. So with it exploded, I'm just going to take this part right here and I'm just going to move it out. That's where I'm going to put my window in. And this is still a component. So what I'm going to go ahead and do to kind of destroy it as a component. So you either make it unique, but I want to just go ahead and explode it. So this is now j just like we did before. This is just individual um, line segments and faces. So let's come into here and let's go ahead and align our view. I don't do that nearly often enough. Uh, I will triple click on it just to kind of move it out of the way like so. And then let's just come in and put in a circle. So I want to make sure that I'm on the face. You don't want to be on the edge. So I'm just going to put it up. Well, I'll put it down on this face here. That looks about centered. And I'll just go ahead and pull out, keeping it parallel to that edge. But I also want to be on the face. So that looks pretty good. And let's see here. Let's take this circle. I grab these segments right here. And I'm going to type in M for move. Click on this face. And just kind of nudge it over. I'm going to have to zoom in or else it kind of jerks around because I want it to be as close to the center as possible. So I'll put it right there. Let's see. Let's go ahead and orbit around just a little bit so we can see what we're see what we're doing here. So let's take and push pull this out. We'll say six inches. We can always push it back. Push pull that out. Double click to push that pull that out the same amount. And then I need to push pull it backwards. You know, actually. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to grab this, push, pull it back. It doesn't really matter how much. That one, the face got reversed. So we'll fix that in a second. And I'll just come to there and then I will go ahead and now push, pull this face out four inches. And then I can either take and heal this with a line across here. But a better choice might be to tap my option key once. So that's going to add a second face. And I'll just come out even to there. And then I'll pull this out even to there. I'll then take and erase this segment and this segment. 
and then I'll take my select tool and grab that geometry there and intersect those faces with the model and I'll come around to this side let's see grab that and delete it so I'll finally I'll erase this line right here and then I'm going to erase this one here and that one there there we go and then I'll come around here and draw I can draw another circle if I want but I think a better choice of or quicker would just be the offset tool so let's see it only offset it only grab that top part there so we're gonna hit escape so I'm gonna double click on this ring here now F for offset there we go and it's about there and then P for push pull and I'll push this in just a little bit because that will be our window and we'll take and give that its own special texture um, that's transparent when we put it in so with that done now I'm gonna just grab all of that geometry right click make it a component I'll call this um, window wedge and then I'm gonna take and move it back so M for move I should be able to put it right back there and we have our window and our door completed.